can get a kit with one or two in them. Activate a beacon by submerging it in water. Interesting. So I guess these are the two water sensors on the bottom. And I guess they're fully encapsulated. They must have some built-in battery. Just plastic. Relative, not like super light. I feel like they have like a maybe two or three AA batteries in there or something like that. They probably have their own batteries, but that's just the weight that I get from it. So, first thing we have to do is download the app. Then we have to activate the beacon. All right, let's let's submerge these in water. We'll try fresh water first, so we keep our variable limited. When activating, make sure that the water sensors at the bottom of the beacon are completely submerged or it will not activate. Tip, put your beacon in a container of water such as a sink or bucket, not a drinking glass, so that the beacon can float on its side rather than upright. Probably so no air bubbles get trapped in those sensors. Keep it underwater for at least one minute, then take it out and dry it off. You ignore this avocado knife. Then we have to pair it with our device, that'll be our iPad. So now we take them out? I think so. No beacons. All right, so we'll add beacon. Searching for beacons. We found two. Oh, that was easy. Pairing, they're like all automatic so far. Our iPad is trying to pair the two beacons. I th yeah, it wasn't pairing because I think, I think because they're wet. It's like trying to pair. There you go. Hmm. Oh, there we go. It said hold your device, hold uh -oh. your beacon to your device. All right, so that's what we, I wasn't holding it close to the iPad. All right, pairing successful. Camera to see. Then we could set a picture and a name. <laughs> <laughs> I look like a Then we'll put one on Jetty too. You're blocking your camera. Say cheese! Over here, cheese is over here. That's you! The picture is for you! Alright, we got two beacons up. Now what? Crew Watcher is disabled. All right, we just Crew enabled watcher. them. Watcher activated. Everyone's okay. And then we can use it. You ready? We're not gonna take adrenaline out just for this test, but we're gonna use the dinghy. We'll bring the iPad on the dinghy. We'll use it for navigation as we usually do, and then we'll have some man overboards, right? <sighs> All right, let's do it. Well, we already mixed up the two beacons because we didn't. We should have wrote the name on the beacon that we assigned to the iPad because they look exactly the same. And now we don't know which one's which. So, tip for you guys: if you get this, write the name as soon as you pair it. I got your life jacket, Jetty. Ah. Where should I put it? Look at you, fancy girl. And we could. You get yeah. some bling. It's like in our way. How about just on the back here? I think it'll still get wet. She says, I don't want to be your test dummy. That water is cold. The way we have our crew watcher now, right in this pocket, I just realized that if I were to pull this, if I was in a situation where I had to pull it, it'd just fall out because it's not clipped. Because it's not a real pocket, it's just the cavity that holds the the flotation of the tube yeah. of the life jacket. So we need to clip it. This is like, I guess, more of a minimal. Yeah, so we should we could clip it to here, but then it's just kind of in your way or something. We'll leave it there for now for testing, but good point. All right. We'll leave this here. 
still says you guys are okay. There's green buttons over here. So I think we should test it on, like without getting it wet first. So I think I should just drop you guys at the beach over there and I'll just ding you away. Bye bye. And we're just gonna leave Sierra and Jetty on land for this trial run and we'll see how far we get until we start getting the alarm on the iPad. Oh, there we go. Just got a missing signal for Sierra. Men, overboard. Not that loud. Man overboard, it's going crazy. It's not that loud though. Definitely not as loud as I thought. Ah, uh, Overboard. So it definitely goes with the volume that you have set on your device. So you gotta make sure the volume is set loud. Look at this thing. Men, overboard. Now we see for Men, one overboard. of the devices. Let's keep going and see if the other device pops up. Men, overboard. So it's not, Jetty's man overboard is not Men, activating. Overboard. Now the direction said that this thing is going to keep going off Men, until I hit overboard. this button. Start rescue. Men, Go to rescue overboard. guide. What does it say? Press the onboard MOB button. Throw life buoy or other flotation device. Send a DSC distress signal. And then we can press it. Start rescue. Men, Go to rescue guide. You still need to account for MOB drift by current and wind. All right, that's the direction our boat's heading. That's where it says the man overboard is. And elapsed time, almost two minutes since we lost connection. 325 feet away from point of loss. Coordinates point of loss. Interesting. All right, so let, we'll aim the boat back to where it says. Oh, there we go. So we're almost to where it says we lost connection. All right, we're right about where it says point of loss occurred, which means it's still gonna be probably about 200 feet from where they actually are. So you can see that, it's about, that's true. Yep, you have reached the point of loss. Try to follow the current. So this is where we would start searching. And they are pretty close. As long as no major current or wind. Signal found, MOB nearby. Ah. Interesting. So it just tells you that's going to mean you're about 200 feet within where the signal is. We're alive. Teddy, I found you. One of the one of the things went off, but not the other one. Who did it? Well, the one that says Sierra's went off. But the other one didn't, but I wonder if that's cuz if one goes off, it's occupied with just that one and not boat and not huh. worrying about the other one. Let's see. Good. Now what? Press and hold to close. Now it says yours, your man overboard is disabled. Can we enable watch again? Alright, enabled. Alright, now we'll test Sierra going in the water. And I'll stay close within that 200 foot range and we'll see if the alarm goes off because the, the sensors, the water sensors on it should detect that it is submerged and it should alert us before we get out of range. Where do you want to fall off? Just fall off right here. How do you? <laughs> oh, it's going off. Oh, so you have Jetty's signal. <laughs> well, now we know that our objective to the climber is to get wet. Do we want to see if Jetty goes off too? If we're yeah, let's see. Yeah, let's see if Jetty goes in. Come here, baby girl. Go get mama. Go get her. Go get her. 
Go get her. One, two, three. What a good girl. Nothing? Okay. No, nope, not for. Well, you have Jetty, so it's it's alarming for your for for the one that's on you. The Jetty's mine's not the No. So we'll have to test that one separate. False alarm and hold to exit. Okay. Well, now hold on. Now I I disable that one. Oh yeah, now it now it's activating for that one. Yeah. Good girl. So you saw this pop right out. <laughs> yep, and that popped right out. So this should definitely be attached or in a secure pocket, that's for sure. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> Is it cold? Yeah, it's not too bad. I would imagine that because these sensors are wet, we would probably have to dry them off all the way before they're gonna work well again, or the right way again. Is that reasonable? But let's see if they work now when I enable them here. You, uh, you're all wet. All right, we're gonna turn them on, turn it back on. No beacons in watch mode. Let's see. Enable watch, all right, got one. It says it's in sleeping mode though. And yours, in sleeping mode. All right, connecting. Crew watcher activated. Oh, they both re both reactivated. Hold on, I'll throw it in. Now let's see if it goes off again. Yep, it detects water right away, and that was that was quick. Then, overboard. So we could have done that without getting the bomb. Yeah, but what fun would that have been? <laughs> Let's see, enable watch. Watching goes right back on. That's cool. That's impressive. All right, so far it seems like when one device gets disconnected and the alarm activates for it and everything like that, it won't detect any other devices being disconnected or man overboard or anything. We're gonna do it again and test and see if that's true. We're gonna put both devices on the beach. We'll go away. Make the alarm go off. I think it'll only go off for one. We'll go back, pick up that one, and then we'll leave out of range again and see if the other one goes off. Or, yeah, or something. They're both staying. Oh, jetty signal is lost. There we go. Alarm's going off. Now let's see, I'm gonna press the false alarm button. Hold two eggs, and we'll see if Sierra's goes off now. So Jetty's is disabled, now Sierra lost signal. Yep, Sierra's just went off. Interesting. Does it tell you where we are, or does it just tell you we're gone? It just tells you you're gone, but then it pinpoints on the GPS where the connection was lost, and it like redirects you back to that spot, but that's still like 200 feet away. And then it just says search visually because it knows you're within 200 feet or whatever. Yours went off first, and then I I pressed here to stop it to like deactivate it. And then as soon as I did that, it disconnected yours, and then Jetty's went off right away. So far, I'm pretty impressed, and I was hoping that this thing would work as advertised because there's a lot of possibilities with it. It's probably not great for like a a super durable, foolproof safety thing, but then again, nothing is. And it's a great like backup or secondary man overboard device or primary if you're considering not having any man overboard devices. I'm just thinking in my head the possibilities of using it and like we have one on Jetty right now, you could have one for every crew member, you can have one on your dog, you can even have one on your dinghy if you're towing it and it would let you know if your dinghy painter got cut or somehow you lost your dinghy. And then that way like say you're towing your dinghy at night or your tender at night or whatever, you would know I guess you gotta be towing it within 200 feet, so it might not be great for mega yachts, but still, you would know if your tender uh, came loose that night. 
give you a chance to recover it. So is this our last test? We just gotta make sure we can walk everywhere on the boat without it false alarming. And then we should test and see if like, if like rain will uh, set it off or whatever. So I'll like throw some water on you. All right, so now we'll mount the iPad back where we normally have it mounted for when we're using it for navigation when we're underway. Right up here on the helm. So I'll turn them back on, enable watch. Oh, and you can rename them too. That's good to know. Same here. Change picture, rename, enable watch. I'm just gonna walk around the boat. I got this sucker in my pocket. All right, let's go walk to the very bow of the boat. We'll have the cabin top in our way of the iPad. We'll go way up on the trampoline. So I'm pretty much on the furthest part of the boat right now, or furthest away from the iPad. Did it go off? No. So far so good. We'll go up in this, well let's go inside. All right, we'll go in the very front. All right, I'm all the way in the port head. This is like the furthest place we would be without being in the storage compartment, but we'll go in there next. So far, so good. Is it good still? All right, I guess we gotta go further. So tight. There would pretty much be no reason for me for this thing to go any further than this. Let's like put it under something. We'll like put it in here. Put it in the sail bag, see if we can block the signal. Still good? We're still good. One more spot. We'll go in the starboard side head, which is actually a little bit further away from where the iPad is, than the port side head. So move, move Jetty's little step right here. We're in the starboard head. All the way up. Really? Ooh, lost signal. So we're not very far, we're only like in a direct line. You want me to keep letting it alert? Yeah, for now. Direct line, I don't know, maybe 30, 30 feet, 40 feet. But we're definitely through like one, two, three, four, like four or five bulkheads. There's no direct path. The Bluetooth signal, I know from experience, is not very strong through bulkheads, like I said before, through water or anything like that. All right, let's go back out and see if the signal gets reestablished pretty quick. What's it doing right now? Yelling at me. False alarm? Yeah, try false alarm, because it's a false alarm. Now what's it doing? Now I have to re-enable it? I don't know. Yeah, because it says watch disabled. Alright, so false alarm, it just disables it. Now Sierra has to manually click it and say... You're back. We're back in business. But now we're back on. Yep. Okay. Interesting, so that's about the furthest place that we would realistically like walk normally. Yeah. Underway, and then we we may be in those storage compartments um, underway, but not usually. Like, Very rarely. We never, especially like all the way up forward in them. I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. So that's something if you guys had or or if we were using this full time, which we probably will be from now on. Um, if we keep getting false alarms because we have our PFD on, which generally like if we're underway. We're, we don't usually have our PFDs on when we're in the hulls or in the cabin, only when we're outside. Yeah. All right, last test is the rain test. I would think that if we spray this, like if this is just clipped on just like this, then the water sensors are hanging down, so they're not gonna be submerged. They, I don't know if they'll get wet or not like that. And if you have it in the PFD in a pocket, it's not gonna get fully, I don't know. All right. Ah, it's raining. It's raining. It's raining. I don't see anything on the iPad yet. We're wasting water. We're wasting now, water. Now, try to shoot it up from underneath now. 
nothing. Wow. I'm surprised. I thought for sure like shooting up from underneath it would go off. One more time from underneath. D here, put it on the edge of the stream. There you go. Yeah, like that. Nothing. Well. Because we read that, too much of it. Alright, that's good. <laughs> Enough wasting fresh water. <laughs> I don't know, that's impressive. Well now dunk it and make sure it still goes off. Alright, good idea. Go ahead. Oh, that holds it uh, upright, huh? Or the wrong way. There it goes. Men, overboard. Signal found. MOB nearby. Interesting. So that's it. I think the only other questions we have will be is it, I mean, it's pretty consistent. I'm pretty impressed. Will it stay this consistent over time, over multiple uses, things like that? How long is the battery life? So we'll keep testing them like throughout the next few days and stuff like that. And if we have anything different to report, we'll report back here. But otherwise, as of now, we kind of recommend it. Yeah. I'd I'd say so. We'll definitely be using them. Let us know if we missed anything in the comments. Let us know if you've used it and you liked it, don't like it, why you don't like it, why you like it. Let us know if you want us to do any more tests in the future. Let us know if you want us to do any more test videos like this in the future. I really like that we have no affiliation with this company because we can be completely unbiased and abuse it and critical. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll put the Amazon affiliate link for this thing in the description of the video right here, and we'll see you next time. All right, so this is interesting too. You can set different ranges, and I'm just assuming that the longer the range, the more power it's gonna use. So this might solve that problem of us walking in that forwardmost starboard head and the uh, false alarm going off. So you can enable high power mode. Just keep it normal for now.